Hi, my name is Robin Wong. In this video, I want to share the Robin Wong OMD cheat sheet updated for 2019. I have done a cheat sheet before and the last one was published in 2015. It has been four years and there are a few new Olympus cameras released since then. So in this particular video, I want to go through some of the settings that are relevant for the new Olympus cameras and the camera that I will be using to demonstrate the OMD cheat sheet will be the newly launched Olympus OMD EM5 Mark III. Basically, if you are still using some older Olympus cameras, the EM1 original, the EM5 Mark II, the EM10 Mark II, the original cheat sheet is still valid and you may refer to that article. I will leave the link in the description below. This video is made in accompaniment with a blog article. And yes, I'm listing down all the settings of the OMD cheat sheet in a blog article format. I personally don't like watching videos so much. Although I've been doing a lot of YouTube videos, I still prefer to read an article on a website. Before we go into the camera settings, here are some important disclaimers. This is not meant to be a complete guide on how to use an OMD camera. In fact, I'll only be discussing on some important settings that I personally use and these settings are tailored for my preferences. And yes, I'm sharing the settings on the OMD camera that I personally use for my own personal shootings as well as for my commercial photography. Also, there is no one fixed best setting for all cameras. I've been asked this question a lot and it gets really frustrating because everyone is different, right? I don't do the kind of photography that you do and I don't know who you are. We are all different. And if I'm shooting a wedding photography, the settings on my camera will be different from you if you go and do a wildlife photography or sports photography. If I'm shooting in San Macro and if you're shooting a portrait of a beautiful lady, the settings of the camera are a bit different. There is no one fix setting for everything. And yes, these settings are my preferences. You may choose to disagree with them as well. I will skip some settings that I don't use or I don't feel is relevant. As I said, this is not a complete guide on how to use the camera because if I go through the million settings in the OMD camera, this video may take about three to four hours to make. And that's not the kind of video that I aim to make here. Also, recently I have released a video talking about how to set up my EM1 Mark II quickly. I'll leave the link to the video here if you haven't seen it yet. That is a different video from this. In that particular video, I was talking about how to set up a camera quickly in a situation where you have to perform a full reset or a hard reset on your OMD camera. So this is a slower guide where I'll bring you through the settings one by one, step by step on how I set up my OMD camera. And this is the new 2019 updated and improved Robin Wong OMD cheat sheet. Let's do this. All right, we will start by going through the menu top to bottom. Then after that, we'll go through some items in the super control panel. Starting from the top at camera number one, here, I don't think I'm going to change anything. Just make sure that your digital teleconverter is turned off. Never turn this on. I've done in my previous video before, I've mentioned that if you turn this on, you will lose a lot of resolution, right? So never turn this on. Going to camera number two, these are some features that I don't usually use. I only call them up when I need them. But as we go to the anti-shock setting, as I mentioned in one of my recent videos, the anti-shock now is automated. You can't turn it on and off anymore. Just make sure that it is on zero second delay and your anti-shock will automatically be enabled every time you use the camera with shutter speeds less than one over 320th of a second. Leave it there and pretty much that's it. I'm not gonna talk about the movie settings because I'm not a cinematographer. I'm very new when it comes to movie. I'm sure some of the reviewers or uh, YouTubers will do some guides on the best movie settings while using the OMD camera. So I'm just gonna skip right through the next item. Here, there's nothing much I want to do here. Most of the action happens at the gear sign here. Starting with the autofocus modes, all the A tabs here are autofocus modes. So there are a lot to go through. I don't change any of them. I personally use single autofocus most of the time. If you want to use, to use, if you want to use continuous autofocus, you can find it here. I don't use 
auto exposure lock or auto focus lock I control my exposure compensation for every single shot that I do going to the tab number two I will leave the AF area pointer to on two and when I enable all autofocus points from my autofocus point selection here it can be really helpful right the cluster autofocus works when this is enabled F targeting pad I'm turning this on this means that when we use the electronic viewfinder we can use the LCD screen here and trace our finger around it to move the focusing point that can be really helpful I don't change anything else from here let's go to a3 if you need the autofocus limiter it is here but I don't use it I generally will turn the AF illuminator off because when this AF beam is on it gives that really red bright beam which can be really annoying in very dim lighting conditions right and everyone look at the red beam shooting out of your camera I'll just turn this off and trust me your OMD will still function optimally in really dim lighting condition I don't trust the face priority or the face detection so I'll just turn it off I know some of you shoot a lot of portraits and the face detection will help a lot especially you don't have to keep moving the focusing point to where the face or the eye of the human is um, I still prefer to move my focusing point manually so I'll just turn this off hey you can disagree with me right I've mentioned that just now let's go to A4 preset manual focus distance I don't use manual focus in my shooting so this is not useful for me uh, all the manual focus help here they are not for me and I don't touch them let's go to B function button okay for the EM5 Mark III there is an ISO shortcut right here at the right top right corner here dedicated button for ISO if you use an EM1X you also have a dedicated ISO button here so for other OMD cameras that do not have a dedicated ISO button I would recommend that you choose one of the many function buttons to reassign them so that you can access the ISO setting directly by pressing the function shortcut you can assign all the functions or you or reassign them to whatever feature on the camera that you want to control um, take your time to study all the buttons on the camera it is entirely up to you but to me I just want to enable a quick ISO shortcut if it's not already available on the camera I will go to the function lever and I will turn this off meaning that now if I switch this function lever here if I turn it to position 1 or position 2 nothing happens and the reason why I do this is because sometimes when the camera is in the back the back moves around and the function will get switched accidentally and when this happens the camera's functions will be screwed up it takes me some time to actually change it back and I miss crucial moments that's very troublesome for me and I'll just leave this off it's up to you some people will prefer to use this as an on off button you can do that as well if you go to the next function here function lever as power lever if you turn this on power one right so here if I turn this to position two the camera turns off if you turn it to position one it turns on and camera turns off right if you want this to be functioned that way but I generally just turn it off electronic zoom speed if you have a lens that have electronic zoom but I don't use any of such lenses so it's not relevant to me moving on I'm not gonna change anything here Ah, flicker reduction uh, in Malaysia flicker reduction for us is 50 Hertz if you're in the US I think it's 60 Hertz I don't know anything else for other countries you might want to explore this changing between 50 and 60 to determine how or which settings will prevent flickering when you're shooting against uh, an artificial light source such as a fluorescent light or a tungsten light I'll just leave this to, to 50 because this is the relevant setting for Malaysia anti-flicker shooting I don't turn this off but if you are shooting against a bright LCD screen or anything with an LED light at very high shutter speed then the anti-flicker shooting will help it gives you the preview of the flicker and you can control the shutter speed to the right one to prevent or minimize the flicker in your shot but I'll turn this off because I don't deal with that kind of shooting most of the time and if I do I will come here and turn this on manually moving on um, image stabilizer I generally leave this to SIS 1 because this is when 
all the axis, all the five axis will be turned on. If I go to any other settings, SIS 2, SIS 3, or even SIS Auto, the camera will choose to disable certain axis when it thinks that you don't need it. I pay for 5 axis IS, I want all my 5 axis to be used to stabilize my shot, so I choose SIS 1. I generally don't touch everything else. So let's go to D1, control settings. This is very important. So in PAS M and B, make sure your live super control panel is turned on. After we go through all the items in the menu, we will talk about what's in the live super control panel. So if yours is not enabled, it is wise to keep this checked so that you can access the live super control panel. For EM5 Mark III and EM1X, the live super control panel is enabled by default. So you don't have to worry about this. There is nothing more that I want to touch here. Moving on. Okay, live view boost is very important. For a lot of OMD cameras, live view boost from manual is turned on. So thankfully for the EM5 Mark III, Olympus has the sense to already turn this off by default. Right, if yours is turned on, I would suggest that you turn it off. The live exposure is not reflected on screen, right? So this is very troubling. So I'll generally just turn this off so that I get the benefit of what you see is what you get. And if I change my exposure settings, I change my aperture and shutter speed, it is fully reflected on screen. I don't generally use art filters, so I'm not gonna talk about this. Live view close up, nope. Let's move on, D3, grid settings. If you want your camera to display some grid, say the um, the typical rule of thirds composition so there you go you have the grid I'm not going to change everything else here oh yes turn off the beep because if you use this in some very silent situation it can be very annoying to everyone else around you moving on there's nothing more i don't use auto iso so i'm not going to change that if you shoot jpeg i would highly suggest that you turn off the noise filter you get the best possible image quality with the noise filter off. But if you are the kind of people who are very allergic to noise, if you see that tiny grain of noise, you'll go cringe, and you know, you're just, you just can't stand seeing any noise, then you might want to go to low or standard. But for me, I'll just turn this off. Leave the noise reduction to auto. This is, this is a dark frame subtraction method. So if your shutter speed goes really low, if you're doing long exposure, photography the dark frame subtraction method means the camera will take two photographs and it will merge the two photographs to get rid of hard pixels these are live bar and live composite settings i'm not going to touch this because i don't use these settings a lot metering i don't bother with the metering because when i shoot i generally just use the exposure compensation right if i think my image is too bright i'll just dial my exposure compensation down if i think my image is too dark i'll just increase the exposure compensation what you see is what you get so the metering mode is irrelevant for me at this point okay uh flash photography we will probably talk about this some other time i don't want to talk about flash because flash itself is an entirely different animal altogether okay coming to g now set the image quality here this is very important except for the em1x and em5 mark 3 where the large super fine is already enabled by default if you are using other camera most of the time you only have large fine large fine is a compression uh, in the, for the jpeg and it's not the best that olympus has to offer the best compression setting for jpeg and olympus camera is large super fine and i would highly recommend that you enable this and this is the place and this is you only have to do this once for everything else white balance keep warm color i personally keep this off uh, some people prefer the more natural warm look i don't like that so i'll just turn this off uh, when you turn this keep warm color off the white balance engine will try its best to neutralize the color and make it as white as possible it is up to you. If you prefer the more natural warm look, then you might want to turn this on. But for me, I'll just turn it off. I don't think I want to change anything here. Nothing to change. Viewfinder. I don't use this S or VF. And that's it for the gear cogs menu. 
coming down to the wrench there are some things here I want to change uh, don't worry about the screen brightness being on the minus 7 because I wanted to have the screen dimmed we are shooting under very dark condition now but I do turn off the record view because after I take a photograph I want to be able to quickly take another one without the preview interrupting my operation right so I just want to continuously shoot without any preview stopping me from seeing what's happening in front of me critical moments remember get the shot preview it later and pretty much that's it for the menu system we've gone through almost all the items that I personally set for my own OMD camera now if you have enabled this live super control panel by pressing the OK button we should come to this particular screen when we are on this screen there are some settings that we have to look at and we have to pay attention to from time to time now I don't use auto ISO, I will just leave it to 200 and I will increase my ISO as I go along. I'll just leave it to any number now, it's not important because I'm not shooting. White balance, I normally leave it to auto with the option of keep the warm color off. Now you can quickly assess this from here to turn it off or on, but I'll just turn it off. And not only that, once you have the white balance, you still can further customize it with the amber and green icons here. So if I go to the amber, I can increase plus 7 to make the photograph more warm or I can minus 7 for a cooler tone. So this is just fine tuning for the white balance. It's the same for the green. You can customize it for the green cast or correct for the magenta cast. My picture mode is left at natural because I shoot a lot of people and I want my photograph to look natural. There are other modes you can play with, you can do eye enhance or vivid. I don't like eye enhance or vivid because it makes the skin tone looking very artificial and oversaturated. I sometimes use muted but most of the time I use natural. This is sharpness, this is contrast and this is saturation. I leave everything zero from here and I also leave my gradation to normal. As I mentioned before, my face priority of face detection autofocus is turned off. I don't trust the camera. Not that the camera is not doing a good job, I just trust myself more. For the aspect ratio, just stay at 4 thirds because at 4 3, aspect ratio you get the full megapixel, the full coverage of your image sensor. If you have a 20 megapixel camera, you get the full 20 megapixels. If you get a 16 megapixel camera, you have the full 16 megapixels. Everything else is cropped. Now here is the, where you select either you want to shoot in JPEG or RAW. I personally shoot in RAW most of the time, but if you want to shoot JPEG, select large, super fine. And if you should have this in your camera after you enable it deep, deep, deep in the menu as I've shown you just now. So I'll just leave it to RAW here. And we are done. All right, I have just fully set up the camera. That didn't take too long, didn't it? Of course, this is not a complete setup. I've glossed over some of the less important items or the settings that I personally don't use. But hey, this should be more than sufficient to get you started and if these settings work for me, for my personal shoots and my commercial photography, it should work for you as well. It's a good place to start. I sincerely hope that you have found the OMD cheat sheet useful. And especially for some of you who have just received your EM5 Mark III pre-order or any one of you who have just bought new Olympus OMD cameras this particular cheat sheet should be able to get you started right away if you like this video please give it a thumbs up please do share it out so that other people can benefit from this sharing as well if you have any other extra tips to share please leave it in the comments below I would love to hear from you I will continue to make more videos like this in this channel until the next one please go out and take more photographs bye bye